When you see an NBA dancer perform, you can't help but be envious. They are glamorous, beautiful, talented, skinny. Pretty much everything you would ever hope to be if you were a girl or a gay guy. Other than the players, these dancers are the faces of the NBA, which is a billion dollar business. They train for their entire lives to be NBA dancers. They put in countless hours, and in return, they are body shamed by their coaches and teams, and they make less than the price of a single ticket to a game. What is good? This is Inform Overload. I'm Charlotte Dobre, your friendly neighborhood triggered feminist. It's been a crazy year filled with women who are speaking out about mistreatment in their industries, and the latest group of women to come forward are NBA dancers. Half of you are already down there in the comments like stupid trigger feminists wanting equal rights. Yes. Yes I do. I want equal rights. For the record, I don't think women should be given special treatment. I believe people should be paid what they deserve regardless of age, gender, or race. And at the very least, I expected more from such a huge profitable organization like the NBA. Shocking allegations have surfaced about the toxic culture of NBA dancers. The story was reported very eloquently and thoroughly by Abby Haglidge, who spoke to dancers from 14 different NBA teams. Once dancers are cast, they face immediate pressure to lose weight. Dancers are given tiny uniforms that they are told they have to fit into. Keep in mind guys, these are athletes. Yes, dancers are very much athletes. They are already extremely toned from countless hours of rehearsal, gym time, and performances. If they have any body fat, it's like minimal. Like they'll probably pinch a side of their arm and be like, oh my god, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna throw up. And what is more is, why does the NBA feel that their dancers need to be anorexic in order to be considered on brand? Like it's almost 2019. Kim Kardashian's massive butt is good enough to grace the cover of magazines, but the NBA won't let you eat a cheeseburger? You should be hired as a dancer because you can dance, not because you're 90 pounds. According to Lauren Harrington, a former NBA dancer for the Milwaukee Bucks, her coach would make her sit in the broom closet before games and think about if she was doing everything that she was able to to lose weight. That is some Harry Potter under the stairs closet when Lauren's coach thought she looked questionable weight wise, the coach would then tell her to put on her spandex uniform to do something called a jiggle test in front of the team. The coach would then come up and grab underneath her butt or the side of her belly. Lauren was 18 at the time. NBA dancers are weighed every month, and the penalty for not being skinny enough would include something like benching performers so they couldn't participate. This fixation on weight loss caused many of the dancers to develop eating disorders like bulimia, and dancers would diet, take laxatives, and starve themselves so they could fit into their uniforms and reach their goal weight. Some dancers were told they needed to lose 5 pounds in one day, which is like, um, <laughs> Like last time I checked, that's not possible. So the Milwaukee Bucks said that they found no evidence to support the claims. I will also say that not all dancers had bad experiences. Some coaches were very supportive, like those of the New York Knicks. But the majority of the dancers that were interviewed said that they had to endure strict weight policies. And then there's the issue of unfair wages. Reports say that some dancers were paid as little as $15 for practices and $25 for games. This is not like a living wage. This is against the law. You can't afford to live on that amount of money. A ticket, just for some perspective, a ticket to an NBA game during the season is $78, and the average NBA stadium seats almost 19,000 people. Out of all of the 15 women Haglidge interviewed, only one said that the money she made from being an NBA dancer was enough to live on. Most had to supplement their income with up to two other jobs. This isn't the first time that Lauren has spoken out against the Bucks. Lauren sued the Milwaukee Bucks in 2015 because they would make her cover the cost of her required beauty routine. The Bucks would make their dancers pay for spray tans, hair extensions, and manicures, rather than cover the cost themselves. It's like, dude, you think I wake up like this? No, this costs money. Take note, fellas. The Milwaukee Bucks made $87 million in 2015. They ended up paying out $250,000 in lost wages to 40 dancers. So far, the NBA has responded to some of the hitting the fan. Most of the teams denied requests for comment, but a spokesperson for the Bucks said in a statement, we treat our employees respectfully and in compliance with the law, also saying that they found no evidence to support the claims. A spokesperson for the Dallas Mavericks said that several years ago the team eliminated the outdated image industry practices regarding weight. So for those of you saying, well these dancers deserve to be paid that little because they're getting exposure, dude, like. Exposure doesn't pay the bills. 
I've heard that exposure excuse from people who couldn't afford to pay me what I deserve so many times. And I'm not gonna lie, like it worked. Sometimes, sure, the exposure could lead to better things, and you feel bad for the single mom who wants photos of her baby. But exposure only leads to better things once you put your foot down and demand to be paid for your time. And this is the NBA we're talking about. The NBA makes millions and millions of dollars. They can afford to pay their dancers, am I right? Point is, sure, maybe 20 years ago, these kinds of rules about body image and pay were acceptable. But it's definitely not acceptable anymore. Hopefully the NBA takes these accusations to heart and starts treating their dancers better. Anyways guys, let me know your thoughts on this story down there in the comments, but for now I'm going to respond to some of your comments from previous videos. Big Digger Nick said, I've been waiting for more info, thank you Potato Queen, you are very welcome. Jake West said, Charlotte I'm not a stalker, I just want to say your new living room furniture looks lovely from the patio window. Uh, I didn't get new, new furniture, I think that you're probably stalking somebody else. Gracie Frey said, I love you Charlotte, I have to say you know a lot. And I liked. I do know a little bit about a lot. Hawk Gaming said, I think people do bad things just to get on the news. If the news didn't post bad things, I think nearly half the bad stuff wouldn't even happen. Yeah, you've, uh, you got that right, but then I also wouldn't have a job, so. Batman Fan Forever said, who else wants to see Charlotte in a bikini? Oh, you do? Here you go. Welcome to the end screen. Thanks so much for spending a few of your valuable minutes with us. If you want to keep watching IO, why don't you check out this playlist over here. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on those notifications so I can see you in the next IO video.